back on the second shelf. I know you did, hon. That's, uh, that's not why I want to talk to you. All right, just a minute. Now? As good a time as any. Which isn't saying much. Do you want to tell her? No. Do you want me to tell her? No. I didn't want to tell myself. I want it to go away. It will if we talk about it. How will that help? To face it, to get it out in the open and get on with it. We said we'd never live in fear, right? Yes, but I thought we meant the usual things. Bashings and beatings, that sort of thing. <laughs> well, you married a very unusual woman. And I want to keep it that way. What? Are you worried I'll find love in the slammer? Sexy Sappho sisters bare naked behind bars? You're not going in the slammer. You said maybe a warning. So what's there to be jealous about? It's not jealousy, it's worry. There's nothing to worry about. <laughs> Ted and Ella are up to speed at the greenhouse. They can handle it while I'm gone. Well, you do the books, so there's no problem. Just pay the Pacific Company supplier on the second week, not the first, and um, that's all. Tell my nerves. I made three mistakes on my client monthly filings today. Three. I can do monthly filing in my sleep. It'll be cleared up, then it'll be better. I hope so. So, yes? Family talk time. Really? Okay. Do you want some tea? I, I have hibiscus. Uh, no, I'm fine. Oh, then I'm fine too. So, go. Well, uh, you know, there's been some changes at the greenhouse. Uh, Tad's day manager and Ella is overseer. Right, so you can go to Spain and not worry. Well, yeah. And no, um, I'll be going away for a little, but uh, not to Spain. I think I will have that tea. You're not going to Spain? Then what? It, um, well, it brings up stuff about the past, stuff I've never told you, and I should, I should have told you. Um, before I met your mom, I was a mess. I, I was with people who, I didn't know what I was doing. Things happened. What things? I was, I was in a group. And they did things, protests. Everybody was protesting then, but what we did was wrong and things went bad and people died. Oh my God. It's all right, honey. So I stopped, I, I ran away and, and I came out here to start again and I did. I met Jesse and you at that picnic and well, the rest is history. But now you're in college and the greenhouse is doing great and Everything is fine. And I, I feel I have to answer for what I did. What are you going to do? I'll talk to Mary Blessed, get her advice on how to clear the record. You're going to turn yourself in? No, it was so long ago. Nothing like that will be necessary. I might have to. It depends on what Mary says. Are you a fugitive? Of course not. Technically, yeah. That's why I want to deal with it. I want to get on with my life, my real life. The past is just, I don't know, a bad dream and I want to get rid of it. It isn't who I am anymore. This is who I am. What's your name? Rose. But you said... It's my real name, the one I've made myself. When I can, I'll get it changed legally, so nothing's different. Wow. I wanted to tell you because I love you, and I want you to be a part of my life. What's going to happen? Mary could say I have to file something. 
or I might have to turn myself in. Who would you turn yourself into? I mean, to who would you turn yourself in? The FBI. The FBI? Wow. <laughs> you should be proud. Your mom's on the most one list. Are you? Sure. I even looked at my picture down at the post office. You did? When? When did you do that? Um, uh, a, a couple of years ago. Uh, I, I was buying stamps and, uh, and there it was. Wanted. Didn't seem real. It, it definitely didn't look like me. I can't believe you took such a risk. You could have been recognized. Are they going to handcuff you and take you away? Of course not. What morbid imagination. It's just a matter of signing papers. Are you scared? Yeah. And why? I made mistakes. I want to get them cleared up. But if you're scared, then... I'm more scared of what might happen if I didn't. Do you remember that big tree in the front, the one on the side? The one you took out? Right. I, I took it out because it was dying. Bugs inside it were eating it alive. Outside, you, could, you couldn't see anything wrong, but, but the inside was gone. And it could come crashing down any second. I feel like that. It's been eating at me for years, and I don't want to crash and hurt anybody. It's better to get it taken care of. Then we can have the rest of our lives without worrying about when and if. What might happen? I don't know. And I don't intend to find out. I love you. I love you too, honey drop. It's going to be fine. By Christmas, this will all be over. Sure. Sure. I've been thinking maybe we should get away this year. Rose and I will drive up and pick you up at school after finals. Then we can get a cabin for the holidays. I could find a nice one if I started looking early. I know a woman over in counseling has a place in the mountains and maybe she'd sublet it this year. She's tired of it. And uh, cheaply, because you never value what you have until it's gone. It'll be fine. It's just one of those things. And we'll get through it. Like when Lady died. Now you're going to make me cry. <laughs> Jeez, Mom, she was 15. That's like ancient in docks and years. Don't be mean to your mom. I loved Lady too, but come on. She was nearly blind. She was deaf. Her brain was pudding. I'm not sure we shouldn't have put her down years before. And that's why we never had another dog. Because my own child is an unfeeling monster. <laughs> oh, Mom. How much cocoa? What? How much cocoa is it going to take to cure you of the weepies? The weepies? You call deep human feeling the weepies? Left covered or right? Left? What? We haven't changed that much. Rose, our daughter says I have the weepies. That's my family. <laughs> and don't be stingy with the marshmallows like last time. <laughs> and that's it. What should I do? Speaking as your friend, and not your lawyer, go home. What? Go home. <laughs> this discussion never happened. I won't even bill you. Le leave. You, you told everyone you're going to Spain? Go to Spain. I hear Alcazar is beautiful this time of year, and the tourists aren't as bad in the summer. You won't take the case? There is no case. There's nothing to take. But, but everything, my, my record, my warrant, what? What? I, I told you what, and I'm not charging, which I think is very generous. I put it down to still owing you for redoing my lawn last summer. Every person needs a good lawyer, and every lawyer needs a good landscaper. So I'm a landscaper who needs a good lawyer. No, you, you need a priest, a rabbi, or, or a shrink. I broke the law. And the law will break you. Uh, but, no, 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 no buts. Look at me. 
I know what you're doing and I want nothing to do with it. Nope, not a zip. What am I doing that's so wrong? What are you doing? <laughs> I'll tell you, you confuse the law with justice. And what is worse, you, oh, you don't even know you're doing it. That is what's really dangerous. But aren't they the same? No, oh, oh. justice is, is perfect. It's beautiful, ideal. It's the pattern of a well-planned universe. It's everywhere and in everything. The molecules of basic existence. Law is what we have because we don't have justice. Law is a approximation, an approach, an impression of justice, forever under repair and revision, hope, hopefully improving, sometimes declining, but always because constructed by human beings, valuable. You want justice. You want your crime to be acknowledged and atoned for. You want to cleanse your soul. That is a metaphysical problem. You want justice. I can only give you law. Are you telling me to forget this? Forget everything that happened? Forget, who wants to forget? You should probably never forget. What I am telling you is to forget legal procedures. But technically I'm a fugitive. I want your help. How can you have my help when you won't take my advice? Do you think I can't pay? Well, the greenhouses are doing great. Jesse and I are secure. Nobody is secure. This could be incredibly expensive and I'm not just talking about money. How old is Blossom? 19. You, you've known her since she was nine, 10 years? 10 years is nothing. The blink of an eye. You start this, it, it could be months, years before it goes to trial. And then, and then what if you're convicted? What if the judge empties both barrels at you? 10 years? Murder one is 25 years to life. 25 years minimum per charge. Are you hearing me? I, um, yeah. How long have we known each other? About the same. That's right, 10 years. You and Jesse are a great couple. You've been good friends, good clients, good gardeners. When Murray left me, may he die of paper cuts in an iodine tank. You were very supportive, very kind. You are an important part of my life here in town. Thanks. You're welcome, it's the truth. What I'm saying is I have nothing but your best interests at heart, both professionally and personally. And I want you to think, think very hard about this. I have. Have you? You, you have a wonderful partner. You have a, you have a great kid who's crazy about you. you, you you've created a successful business. Why do you want to throw it all away? It isn't throwing it away. It's making it better. Those are religious terms, not legal ones. What I did was wrong. Now I, I can make up for that. I want you to tell me how. I told you to go home. That doesn't answer my question. That's right. I can't answer your question. So why should I waste my time trying? I don't know who else to ask. What do you want from me? To report you? To dial 1-800-RATS-R-US number and have a little chat with my local FBI agent? Is that what you want me to do? No. Then what? Do what you can to make this happen as, as smoothly as it can. So you are afraid. Thank God for that, at least. More evil in this world has been done by people willing to be brave and by people willing to be wicked. I know what I did. I saw the bodies. I know what happened. I read about it in law school. I think everybody read about it. Even Jesse asked me once, how did it feel? It didn't feel at all. Nothing felt like anything. Then there was no feeling. But before it happened, life was drugs, the group, no sleep, fear. 
afterward was just blank. The only thing was after it happened, I couldn't taste anything. <laughs> Pickles, fried rice, ice cream, everything tasted like cardboard. I freaked, ate everything, just, just stuffed it in my mouth, a whole jar of peppers, a package of Twinkies, most of a bottle of hot stuff just squirted down my throat, but nothing. That's why I started to cook anything, the weirdest, wildest recipes, anything to, to wake me up. I made every recipe in every exotic cookbook I could find cover to cover, but mostly I just took a bite and threw it away. What happened? It came back. It all comes back. Except the dead. They're not coming back. But it did come back. Yeah. On our second anniversary in, in the afternoon, Blossom was at school. I, um, I was making a strawberry pie for dessert. And uh, I had the crust ready, I'd, I'd made the glaze, and I, I bit into a strawberry to test it for texture. And when I bit into it, I could taste, <laughs> oh, the sweet splash of summer made me want to shout. <laughs> I wanted to eat the whole bowl grabbed handfuls. <laughs> I was crying, right? And goop was everywhere. <laughs> When Blossom came home from school, she started screaming. She said, I'd cut myself. <laughs> By the time both of us calmed down, <laughs> I don't think I ever made that pie. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the best thing I never made. <laughs> oh, believe me, I can't give you better than that. <laughs> you made yourself a new life. Be content. I am. And I want to protect it. How is destroying something protecting it? Tell me, that is a very scorched earth way of thinking. It could all be ruined. What if I'm found? What if someone comes into the greenhouse and recognizes me? What would happen? I would still be on the run. Everything would come back to get me and I might as well have spent my whole time running. All the good I've done, all the work, all the whatever it is would be for nothing. No, not for nothing. But it would be much more, mean much more if I turned myself in on my own, right? Possibly. Well, I think I need all the chips I can get because it does not look good. I have a lot in my way, and I don't want this hanging over me for the rest of my life. I want to move on. Sometimes calling the game early is in your favor, right? Oh, God, I hate sports analogies. So help me. Tell me what to say instead. The law is not your friend. The law is not interested in your salvation. The law is about the maintenance of structures and you are not a structure, you are an individual and therefore only visible when, when viewed through the, the prism of your structured relation to others. In this case, your victims. How many people died? Seven. All police officers? Patrick was killed too. Uh, six police officers, their usefulness wiped out, their training and education written off as a loss. That is what the law will see, and it will hold you responsible. I understand that. We are talking about state charges and possibly federal charges as well. And, and Rose, listen to me. The death penalty is definitely a factor of consideration. I want to tell my side. To write a book. Fiction, of course, heavily disguised. I owe myself the truth. What do you owe, Jesse? The best of me. To be as I am. The best I can for brighter times and darker. And is going to trial as a cop killer. The best you can. I don't want to go to trial. I want to make it right. I'm here to help. 
tell me, please tell me how I can do that. Why won't you help me? Because it's a mistake. Because I don't want to see you suffer. Good, that makes two of us. I, I don't want to see you destroy the life that you've made. What good's a life without the truth? You, you've managed so far? No, my life has been... Who knows how could it could have been? How good it can be? That's what I want to know. It's been 10 years so far. And each year I, I take this step, I get can. I, I get stronger or the business grows or I get better. Each year growing to this. This is the next step. This is what I want to fight for. Life will never be better. Then enjoy it. No, you don't wait to start a trip because the weather is too good. You start right away while the sun is shining because traveling is hard enough as it is. No one is making you go. I am. Then stop. I want to go. It's so right. It, it keeps me up at night thinking about it. Yeah, I'm scared. Yeah, I'm, I'm worried. Yeah, I don't want to rock the boat or, or risk our lives or do any of that. But that's what it's come to. I want to go away so I can come back again. That's my goal the time after. That's what I want to fight for. Will you help me? Would you stop if I said no? No. Would you reconsider? No. What would you do? Find another lawyer. I don't like having my hand forced. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm just asking you to help me. Okay, if I do, will you consider postponing a year? No. Six months? No. Is this how you argue with Jesse? Is this how you win your arguments? Well, generally she wins. <laughs> Oh, I am not sure I believe that. I can call her up, see how she recovers after you run her over. I try not to. <laughs> <laughs> Believable as sentiment, not as testimony. Will you help me? Yes. I will do what I can. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Almost finished. That's fine. Wait downstairs if you like. No, that's okay. You wouldn't hear it so much. It's all right. Uh, go uh, check the fire. <laughs> Blossom stoked it before she went to the movies. Oh, um, good. <laughs> I hope somebody knows how to drive in this rain. It's dangerous. People get so wild like they never saw rain before. It's only to the mall. They'll be fine. I just worry. If it gets past 11, we'll call. This isn't what I planned. None of it. None of this. That's why I like accounting. Everything nice and tidy. Things mean what you decide they mean. Everything keeps to its assigned position. <laughs> it makes problems very easy to solve. Do you think that makes me rigid? Hey, you didn't hear it from me. <laughs> I just like to know what's happening. To put a number on it, something reliable. Did <laughs> I take this or is it too girly? I bought you that. Oh, that's right, you did. <laughs> oh, our first vacation. In the San Juans. Oh, you were jealous. You were indecent. It was not. Flashing your nipples at everybody. What, they didn't seem to mind. <laughs> they didn't mind. <laughs> oh, I thank 
you. They thank you. <laughs> oh, I was probably just jealous. Protective. Territorial. Possessive. What's mine is mine, and and nobody can take that away from me. It's okay. It's not okay. God damn it. God damn it. God. Jesse, don't. Damn. Damn. J j just wait. Damn. Honey, I... Here. I'm sorry. Don't worry. I am, though. Sure. It just makes me crazy. The noise makes me, the, the, the thunder and the lightning, I don't know, both of them. My stepmother used to say, that's God knocking heads together. Hear him? Think how much that'd hurt, knocking heads together. And if you're bad, he'll knock your head with somebody else's. And I believed her. And when it stormed, I would cry because it sounded so close. And I knew he was going to get me and knock my head together. And it would splatter like a pumpkin after Halloween. Oh, yuck. Rain the day I married Hank. Just like today. It was probably some kind of sign. Every time he hit me. I think it's that storm just bottled up inside. He didn't ever want to hurt me. He was the sweetest guy, but when the rain started in his eyes, everything came out. Hank's gone now. Rain then too? Off the road and into a concrete culvert. The angry just wanted out so badly. There was nothing you could have done. He was, he was driving drunk. He could have killed someone. He did? Himself. Shit! It, it's okay. I'm here. But you're not going to be. Just for a week or two. Mary said. Oh, so she's cautious. It could be months. What are we talking about? It could be years. Wait, hold on. I can't lose you. You're not going to. Your stepmom was was sick. Your husband was a bad drunk. What they did to you had nothing to do with you. And it's got nothing to do with what's going on with us right now. Got it? Yes. You never have to see any of them again. Hank's dead, and, and your stepmom's too mean to be let out of Forest Lane. <laughs> but they have to feed her through a slot in her cell door. Now stop it. <laughs> Can't even go in there without winching back her neck collar with the chain against the wall. <laughs> Lynching, no chain, no wall. You can't even examine her without a train gun. <laughs> How are we this morning, Mrs. Riddix? <laughs> oh, same as usual, I see. <laughs> oh, and how are our teeth this morning? <laughs> <laughs> you are completely awful. <laughs> and that's why you won't miss me. <laughs> I will miss you. And I'll miss you. That's why I'm coming back. You know, Blossom's already starting to blame me. 
she's upset about your going, and she can't blame you. You're the one who's going, so it must be my fault. <clears throat> Mommy punching. I'll talk to her. Why? So she'll hit harder. You don't think it'll help? She'll get over it. What's to get over? I'll be back before anyone knows I'm gone. Oh, too late for that. She knows you're going. I know you're going. That's just as bad. I'm going so I can come back. That's like that quote I read. Fighting for peace is like fucking for virginity. I thought you supported this. I did. You did? I tried, but now I, I don't. To be absolutely honest, I don't at all. I'm sorry, but it's better to say it. Okay. Let's talk. I don't want to talk. I don't want you to go. That's it. Well, that's a start. It's not a start, it's an end. And don't psychoanalyze me. Maybe you should see Carolyn again. I have. I started last week. Were you going to tell me? I was hoping I wouldn't have to. A few sessions of crisis management and that would be all. Is it helping? Obviously not. This is an unmanaged crisis? This crisis defies management. Okay. All right. What are you doing? I'm here. I see that. <laughs> I'm not going uh, until you feel better, until it's not a crisis. You're kidding. No, I'm not. <laughs> You're going to go regardless of how I feel. What? No! How you feel is probably the, the, the second most important thing. After how I feel. Does that mean you're selfish, but you'd consider my feelings? It means I wouldn't hurt myself to keep you happy. I wouldn't want you to. And that's one of the reasons I love you you do something I didn't approve of. No. But you're doing this. What? Not till you let me. But that's no choice. You pretend you're open to talking, but you're not. You've decided the outcome already. But I don't know how I'll get there. What if you don't? Then I don't go. I made you a promise. If you don't think I'm serious, 10 years should have taught you better. What if I refused to talk? Refused to play along? Just left you lying here in bed. Well, hope you'd send up a tray once in a while. <laughs> You're impossible. <laughs> Don't make I, me cry. I need you. You're the most important part of my life. When I saw you playing with Blossom at that picnic, I heard a voice saying, she's the one. And I thought the one, the one what? The one for now, forever? The one who knows where the porta potty is? <laughs> Fortunately, I did know where the porta potty was. Oh, thank God. <laughs> you know, they do that on purpose. Hide it out there so new people have to ask old people where it is. <laughs> oh, I thought it was something like that. Apparently, it works. <laughs> So anyway, I'm in there, right? And I'm thinking, okay, what now? <laughs> what do I do? All she knows about me is I need to use the toilet. <laughs> is that a good thing? Well, it's better than not. <laughs> <laughs> and still, I, I didn't know. <laughs> I said, what do you mean the one? <sighs> I never got an answer. It just repeats from time to time. She's the one. She's the one. She's the one. I would never do anything without you. If I'm brave, it's because of you. If, if I'm practical, it's because of you. If I'm strong, it's because of you. Hey, it's not all my fault. <laughs> I have to take some responsibility. 
I was a mess. The only reason I could, could put my life behind me was because there was no life. I had nothing. I followed Patrick, not because I believed his stuff, but because he said he'd make me someone. And I wanted that so badly. I didn't care if that someone was, was bad or crazy or filled with hate. I wanted to be someone so badly because being empty hurt so much. But, but with you, I'm filled. <laughs> and, and it isn't bad and it isn't crazy. I'm my own person and I don't need to hate to be full. You taught me love. The person I love is you. Then why do you have to go? If I'm a person, I want to be a free person. I want to pay my debts. No one is asking you to pay them. It doesn't mean they don't have to be paid. When I think about living without you, there's a dull ache under my ribs and my heart feels dry and scratchy like somebody left it in an ashtray. It hurts me too. I want you to stay, to hold you forever and be with you, just the two of us for the rest of time. Isn't that what we promised? I feel you in my heart. Even, even when we yell, even when we're far apart, we're together. Can you feel that? Last night, I thought about the day after tomorrow. You'd be gone a day. I wouldn't hear you at breakfast out in the greenhouses doing the morning watering. You wouldn't come in to read the paper as I was leaving, and you wouldn't drive over to get the cat food and meet me for lunch. We wouldn't drop by the library and search for new mysteries before I had to be back at the office, and you wouldn't be there when I came home that night. And I'd have to turn off the bedside light like I turned it on in the morning and off and on and off alone. But I'm right here. But you won't be the day after tomorrow. What about, what about when you took Blossom to Mexico for a month? Everything was all right, wasn't it? I was bitten by a spider. The bus driver nearly got us killed and Blossom had diarrhea for nine days. So maybe that wasn't a good example. <laughs> Just say it's a joke. Say it's a bad dream. Say that you're not going. I'm not going. Until you're ready. I'm not going to be ready. I'm not ever going to be ready. Not for this. All my life, I have had to fight for what happiness I've had. For custody of Blossom, for a life with you. And I have them right now, and they make me very happy. And you're asking me to let go of that and let you walk away. I'm not walking away. I'm walking towards. Towards what? A, a riot? A lynch mob? How is that supposed to make me feel better? Towards my new life with you. That's that's what I want. That's that's what I see. The rest is just stuff. Shadows. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. <laughs> I never understood why that started with yea. It seems like a really inappropriate thing to say. It's sort of like, whoopee, shadow of death, shadow of death, yay, shadow. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
right. Stop it. Stay home. What's your worst fear? That you're going to die. Really me, not, not something to do with Blossom? Blossom can take care of herself. I need you to take care of me. Which I can't do if I'm dead. Right? <laughs> So it's not really about me being dead so much as about me not being able to take care of you. Well, <laughs> I don't intend to die. Not for a long, long time. And I'm going to take care of you. I'm in jail. However, I have to. Do you hear that? However, I have to. You... You keep thinking I'm going away, but I'm not, not, not in the long run. When, when this is over and, and one day it'll be over, then I'll come back and I'll never go away again. But you're going away now. I need to formally turn myself in and plead guilty. Then, then we'll go to trial on, on mitigating circumstances. That's where Mary has me tell my side. What really happened? I hate that you're pleading guilty. I was an accessory. I was there. And now you're going to jail. Yes, pending trial and then, and then for whatever time I have to serve. And then you'll come right back. Hell yeah. You'll come right back. Of course, I'll come right back. You'll come right back. Yeah, I will. Then you can go. <sighs> Thank you. blessed uh yes and you are grace lockland have we met no i wanted to introduce myself oh yes i will be prosecuting the case against your client uh uh i i see i wanted to give you some friendly advice i can hardly wait you might as well pack your bags and do your sightseeing now there are several good restaurants I can recommend. I'll have my secretary draw up a list. She loves planning things like this for out-of-towners. And why is my time so short? Mary, do not delude yourself. Believe me, I try not to. You may think this is going to be a simple little case, but it is not. I don't think of my cases in terms of big or little. I prefer to think of them as my clients. <laughs> oh. Your client. Yes, we have been talking a great deal about your client. And the word came down to my office today. We are going to mail her to the wall. Just so you know. Well, it's always interesting to know the intentions of the opposite side. Your only hope is to sweep this under the rug. But we are not going to let you do that. We are going to be as loud and as public as we can. Your client will have nowhere to go. Everyone is going to know her name, know about this case, and know she did it. Well, frankly, one of the reasons I became a lawyer was my hatred for housework. Nothing will be swept under the rug. Your client is guilty. I don't think so. A client was young and foolish, as we all were, I imagine. <laughs> Dyeing your hair an unfortunate color is being young and foolish. The same cannot be said for murdering six police officers. Objection. Speculation. Do you know what I see when I look at her? Six ruined families. Six husbands blown away. Six wives left 
destitute, six sets of children, fatherless and traumatized for life. That is what I see. And how many were going to St. Ives? I do not joke about atrocities. The death of six cops who don't know enough to remove highly flammable material from their car before responding to an in-progress bank robbery by known unstable armed fanatics is not an atrocity. Whether it's a comedy or not depends on your taste for the Morton, but it is certainly not an atrocity. Your client is a cop killer. <laughs> was driving the car. The testimony in Hefix versus U.S. proved she had no knowledge the explosives were in the bag, let alone available for use. Do not feed me that line. It's not a line. Hey, babe, did you shave for me? Is a line. Of course she knew the explosives were there. She is guilty. She admitted it. She turned herself in. She is going down. And you're here to push her under, watch the bubbles rise? We are going for the maximum. She is not leaving here a free woman. With luck, she may never leave at all. Am I supposed to be worried about this threat? Don't get your hopes up. Bravado is no match for justice. And the district's attorney's office is no match for the truth. <sighs> There was a local bank robbery when I was five. A little something like the picnic your client had, except instead of six cops, 11 civilians died, including my father. So you see, I am very interested in this case. You appear to be a intelligent woman, but you are not going to win. You are playing on the wrong side and you are going to lose. I don't think so. Well, then that is your first mistake. Am I supposed to be impressed that you lost your father? Am I supposed to throw up my hands and give up my case out of sympathy for you? I don't think so. I think you were lucky. A circumstance which hurt you personally has bloomed to the benefit of many people. That sort of thing shapes lives. Often, though it may be intensely painful, you lost a father, but the state gained a legal watchdog. I salute you for turning your private pain to public benefit. Only the most esteemable characters are able to do that. However, the danger is that you make what is a mandate for public good and turn it to a license for zealotry. We should, all of us, be zealous for the truth. Private pain is an excellent fuel. It can illuminate brave minds at their best, but it can also stoke the fires of vendetta, which only defaces the justice it purports to uphold. I am a public prosecutor, as was my father, as was my grandfather. You need not lecture me about justice. Well, turn your grief to the tool of justice and your father wouldn't have died in vain. Use it in hatred and you might as well have fired the shot yourself. I will see you in court. This case is about mercy. It is about justice. My, ooh, my client is not a spade for your grief. If you make an example of her, the only example you will make is of yourself. She admitted to the crime. I am going to be certain that she does the time. Tell me, do you actually think in these cliches or is it just some form of macho bandage? <sighs> I believe we are finished. Rose isn't guilty of being anything more than, than a, a lost person and a, and a lost generation. You should put the generation on trial, not the individual. A generation does not break laws, an individual does. But history could provide you with some interesting contradictions. A generation is simply a facile category. It has no legal existence. The individual is the concern of the law. Oh, I heard justice was the concern of the law. Am I right? The justice as applied by and to the individual in the form of social justice. But, but, but as the mores of society change, so changes the definition of justice. Is it not therefore grossly unjust to judge the action of, of a one-time participant with the perceptions of another? Murder remains murder. The mores do not change that much. Except in war.
when directed killing is not a crime. They were not at war. They were criminals. Oh, they believed they were. Well, paranoia is neither a legal nor a moral justification. Uh, public documents show the FBI was prepared to meet the group's next maneuver with lethal force, as well as incorporating military backup and personnel. That sounds like war to me. Oh, facetiousness is not going to win your case. Oh, but it's a good weapon for dismantling yours. <laughs> if you believe you Listen, coming from princess, mm. you will not railroad my client to appease your poor little rich girl conscience. Do you understand? My conscience has nothing to do with it. Spoken like a true public prosecutor. <sighs> You are going to regret that. Or, or, or maybe it's about your boss. From the sound of your rhetoric, is up for re-election. Could use some big points with the Victims League or the cop vote. Is that it? I would not imagine you'd have much interest in local politics. I don't. Except that they're the cause of someone trying to fry my client. The death penalty will probably not be necessary. Six lifetime sentences will be sufficient. Well, it's been fun, but I have a case to win. I will have my secretary send over that list of restaurants. Oh, do! I could use the scratch paper. Rose Tree? I'm Emma Lohman. We spoke on the phone. I thought we could talk. Sure. I could ask you some questions and then write up a little piece for the paper. Now, I'm not promising anything, but if the editor likes it, who knows? Right. Well, then, fine. Let me just get set up here. There we go. Now, don't be nervous. This is just to help me remember what I said. Sure. I'll start with a few simple questions just to get us warmed up. Yeah. Uh, did you talk to Mary? Project 10, Section 2, Preliminary Interviews. Subject 3, Rose Tree. First interview. Hello, Rose. Hi. Rose is such a pretty name. Thanks. But it isn't yours, is it? Um, no. How did you come to choose it? Well, uh, it was in a song. A song? A song I used to sing when I was small. Oh, a children's rhyme. How sweet. Yeah, sort of. So when you went into hiding, were you hoping to revert to a pure and childlike state? Is that why you took the name? Uh, no, uh, it wasn't a song. I mean, it wasn't a kid's song. It was a hymn. A hymn? Mm -hmm. Really? That's lovely. Thanks. Do you consider yourself a religious person? Well, uh, I was raised a Christian. How were you raised? Were you raised a devout Christian? I mean, my parents went to church, but I wouldn't Did speak. you have a good church upbringing? Well, we, we went to church as kids, sure, but... It was a happy, simpler time. And do you still try to live a good Christian life? Is that still important to you? In a way. And do you struggle with your homosexuality? Um, uh, do I what? Struggle with your homosexuality? It is a terrible sin after all. It must give you tremendous guilt. Not really. Did that form part of your urge to kill on that fatal day? Um, what are you talking about? How much a part did guilt over your filthy sexual drives contribute to your homicidal rage? What, th that's not, um, I don't have any guilt. Oh, so you're proud of having slaughtered those six fine police officers? No, I, I didn't slaughter them. Was it because they were men? As a lesbian, aren't you sworn to wipe out male humanity? N that's crazy. 
How many more did you hope to kill that day? Were you disappointed that so few died? I, I didn't want to kill anybody. And now your sexual perversions compel you to repeat the crime by beating the whores and the girlfriend you have sex with, right? All of this is fueled by your demonic rage that curses heaven because you're not a man. No. Why do you think homosexuality leads to witchcraft and Satanism? What are you talking about? How long have you been allied with the Antichrist? I am not allied with the Antichrist. Do you prefer giving or receiving cunnilingus? How much does humiliation play a part in your sex practices? Who are you? How do you, did you indulge get into in what you? is called bondage? Do you believe voodoo is a salient part of the women's movement? You didn't talk to Mary at all, did you? Are you a practicing member of a coven? Have you participated in animal or even human sacrifices? Do you practice? ritual defilement of your body? Are you crazy? Have you ever had heterosexual sex? Are you frigid? Do you have sexual phobias? No. Were you raped as a child? The victim of incest? Did your father molest you more than once? Leave my father out of it. Did he rape you? Did he touch you? Did he force you? to perform oral sex on him on Sunday afternoons? Stop it! I only want the truth, Rose. Guard! I want to help you. I know you're in pain. Guard! 60% of all lesbians have considered suicide, and I can't say I blame them. Their lives are so horrible, so tragic, such an ugly world waste. But it doesn't have to be this way. People want to help you live a healthy, normal life. What's normal? Fucking guys? That's not normal for me. That's how I got into this mess. Yeah, I was fucking Patrick. And you know what? He'd always want to do it right then, especially if it had been fucked up the minute we got back to the house. Bam, motherfucking assholes. Bam, stupid cunts. Bam, who told them to get in the way? Bam, shit suckers weren't supposed to be around. Bam, fucking blasted brains everywhere. Fucking goddamn old lady. Bam, goddamn baby. Bam, 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 oh. fucking mess. The minute we got back to the house, my own little playback of the whole thing. He made me bleed, but he didn't care. He'd gotten his rocks off and solved the whole problem. Yeah. Yeah, I was doing much better with a man in my life. Do you agree that penis envy is a major cause of lesbian homicidal mania? Get out! I can't. I can't do it. Of course you can. No, I can't. It won't work. It doesn't have to work. It's the truth. No one will believe me. You don't know that. You don't know what they may or may not believe. That's my job, to make them believe you. And I am damn good at my job, so they will believe you. They won't. They hate me. So. Maybe they do at the moment. It's an advantage. People believe the people they hate. No, they don't. Yes, they do. They believe anything bad about a person they hate, just like they believe anything good about a person they like. So it's almost a level playing field. This is such shit. They don't hate you. 
they hate what they think you did. Remember, we're not trying the crime. We are trying your participation in it. Nobody's gonna get that. By the time I'm done, they will. Everybody hates the bad guy and loves the hero. It's natural. The challenge here is to convince them that although dreadful things have happened, you are not the villain. You are the hero. Now, most lawyers stop at victim, but I'm gonna go for the gusto. We're gonna come out of the courtroom with crowds cheering. They're gonna love you. A cop killer? A trigger happy dyke? You are not a cop killer. There is nothing to hate in you. You're the hero of this story. So it's all about me? It's about them. It's about what they think about you. They want me dead. Maybe now, but this is not the end of the trial. What, what's her name? Would, would, would kill me with her own hands if she could. What did I ever do to her? It's, it's called transference. The prosecutor has problems, so you have problems. Well, that's not fair. But it's useful. Any weakness in your opponent is an asset to you, and personal over-involvement is a major weakness. And you're not? There is a great deal of difference between professional determination and neurotic need. Besides, it doesn't matter what Grace thinks. She's not the one we have to convince. That's the judge and jury. What? I thought you said she was the enemy. No, no, no. She's the adversary. The enemy is the one who's opposed to you. The adversary is the one who's opposed to you obtaining your goal. Uh, you know you could make hair splitting an Olympic event. What? Give up my professional status? Never. Ugh, she's going to nail my ass <laughs> to the wall. No, she's going to try to nail your ass to the wall, and I'm going to stop her. How? By teaching you to sell the truth. Tell the truth. Sell the truth. It's very simple. All you need to do. Wait, no, no. I thought you said all I had to do was, was to tell the truth. I did. But there's a difference between, uh, hello, everybody. It's, uh, it's a lovely day. And <laughs> hi, folks. It's a great day. You need to sell the truth, not simply tell it. Otherwise, no one's going to be interested, right? Sure. Right? Right. That's better. Oh, I can't do it. Nobody will believe me. Do you believe yourself? Yeah. Oh, good. That's where you start. Belief is contagious. The more you believe, the easier it is to tell others. The more you tell others, the more they believe. The more they believe, the more confidence you have. And the more confidence you have, the more convincing you are. It's, it's a golden circle. I don't need a golden circle. I need a, a, a life preserver. Look, I, I believe myself. That's, that's the problem. I know all about me. I'm a, I'm a bike riding, farm owning dyke who loves her partner and misses her kid. But I also know most of the world doesn't think too well of the things that I think are just great. Mainly the bike riding dyke part. Fortunately, we don't have to worry about most of the world. Only 12 people and a judge. Then that's supposed to make me feel better? The size of the problem is the size of the answer. Oh, what's wrong? It's Blossom's birthday today. Oh, oh, that's hard. Yeah. <laughs> Last year, we, uh, we drove up to school to surprise her. She was so mad. There she was, freshman year, fall term, on her birthday, and her parents show up. Totally geeky. Oh, I'm sure she thought she was going to die. <laughs> <sighs> that didn't help that we brought stuffed animals. Yuck. Big stuffed animals. Big pink stuffed animals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have no mercy. Oh, she's our baby girl. Oh, it sounds like a life sentence. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was really ugly. Yeah. Fortunately, we got better as the weekend wore on. Parents are really geeky at first, but by the time they've, uh, you know, taken you shopping, cleaned your dorm room, done your laundry, and taken you and your six friends out for a birthday meal, <laughs> they're pretty cool. Yeah, money can't buy you love, but oh, it helps on campus. Yeah, it was the laundry. No force on earth can resist clean socks. <laughs> This year we were going to be much better. We were just going to call and sing happy birthday really, really loudly. So, so she knew it was us, but <laughs> then we'd tell her about her check, her first check in the bank account towards her trip to Europe this summer. She'd get the next one at Christmas and 
Now that's not so sure, is it? One thing at a time. And I can't even call her. Blossom knows you love her. <laughs> she's not a dumb kid and she is doing her part. She went to school, she's working hard, she's going forward. Yeah. And I just wish that she's got to keep going. Just like you have got to keep going. Just like Jesse and I have got to keep going. We are all doing it together. Jesse keeps the home fires burning and the greenhouse is open, blossoms at school. I'm the big mean lawyer woman. And you, well, I guess you're the heroine because there doesn't seem to be any more roles. So you better get used to it. Yeah. When you get up there tomorrow, don't let her rattle you. She wants to get the upper hand. She'll try all she can do to shake you off balance. So what do I do? Stay calm. Take your time to answer. Say what you want to say, not what she wants you to say. Oh, God. Your answer should be short, clear, and polite. Don't get defensive or hostile. Respect the judge, but don't be frightened. I'm already frightened. Think of the courtroom as a... As a beautiful, expensive restaurant, set your tone accordingly. Don't swear or use bad language. Remember, be calm. Taking the higher ground will keep you on the straight and narrow. The forward and direct. Touchy, touchy. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm nervous. I just keep thinking about what's the worst that could happen? Tomorrow or the whole thing? The whole thing. At the very worst, we're talking about the death penalty. Oh, shit. Oh, wait, wait, don't panic. Look here, I, I, what do we have behind door number two? The very best that could happen. Mitigating circumstances save the day. The judge is moved to clemency and you receive minimum prison sentence, including time served so far. And eventually with time off for good behavior, you walk out of there a free woman. So what do you think it's going to be? What do I think? Yeah. In all honesty? Yeah. In all honesty, I am walking out of here through door number two and I am taking you with me. So help me God. Thank you. You may be seated. Is your name Ruth Trent? Yes. But you're currently known as Rose Tree, is that right? Yeah. Yes. Are you married, Rose? Yes. Uh, Jesse Raddox is your partner, your legal spouse for the last eight years, is that correct? Yes. Do you and Jesse have any children? We do. We have a daughter. Jessie's her birth mom, and I, I want, I, I hope to adopt her. And what is your daughter's name? Blossom Radix. For the past eight years, you and Jessie have been raising Blossom together? Yes. Uh, Jessie works for social services downtown, and I work at home, so I'm the at-home mom. I, I was there after school, helped her with her homework. Unless it was math, Jessie handles that. <laughs> Now, you say you work from home. What is your business? RT Greenhouse. We do wholesale and retail specialty vegetables. Do you own this business? Yes. Jesse and I own it together. We're doing okay. We make enough to get by, and every year we donate to programs at Blossom School and to the women's shelter and clinic. Mm, very good. Let's, let's turn our attention to a less happy time, uh, more confused and difficult time. 14 years ago, you were involved with an organization called the National Liberation Organization, were you not? Yes. And at that time, did you live with other members of the organization? Yes, we lived in a house on Cherry Street. How many others in the group lived in the house on Cherry Street? Most of us. Were you related? No. Were any of you married? No but you all lived together? Yes. Were you in contact with your family? 
No. Was any member of the group in contact with his or her family? Objection, speculation. Stained, rephrase the question. Uh, yes, Your Honor. To your knowledge, did any other member of the group have contact with his or her family? No, nobody. Did family members come to the house? No, Patrick would, wouldn't let them in. He would call them names until they went away. Patrick was the leader of the group? Yes. Did Patrick make the decisions? Yes. Did anyone else make decisions for the group? No. Were decisions put to a vote? No. Well, as far as you know, did Patrick ask for advice or feedback on his decisions? No. As far as I know, no. So Patrick controlled all the decision-making for the group. Patrick controlled the group? Yes. Did Patrick decide who was in the group? Yes. Did Patrick decide who was out of the group? Yes. If Patrick cast someone out of the group, what happened? It was terrible. It, you couldn't talk about them. You couldn't even say their name. Patrick would start screaming if you mentioned them. Hmm. Were you allowed to speak with former members of the group? No. It, it was like they had... What was it like? It was like they had died. Okay, so leaving the group, being forced to leave the group seemed like death. Yes. Were you afraid of this death? Yes. You, were you encouraged to socialize outside of the group? No, talking to strangers was forbidden. Patrick forbid you to talk to anyone outside of the group? Yes. Were you allowed to speak to your family? No. How long had you lived with this man? Four years. Had you seen your family in that time? No. And for four years, this man had been making every decision in your life? Yes. So you were living in a cult? Objection. National Liberation Organization may have been a criminal enterprise or a terrorist group, but it most certainly was not a cult. Please keep your language clear, Counselor. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, thank you. Would cult-like be acceptable? Objection. Your Honor, I am prepared to bring in expert witness who will testify without a doubt that the atmosphere pervading the house in question was cult-like in the extreme and that the psychological profile of the organization is an exact match with that of a cult-type organization. And I am prepared to forego that information for the time being. You will continue to refer to it as an organization. Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Uh, uh, as a member of the organization, were you involved in planning the bank robbery? No. Who planned it? Patrick. Did he explain his plan to you? Yes. Were you surprised? Yes. Was this in line with his usual way of thinking? No. How was it different? It was bigger, more money, a bigger bank. I was scared. Did he say why he wanted to do a bigger job? No. That is, I... <sighs> what did he say? He said he'd got something so we could go ahead, something that would knock their teeth out of their asses. Did you know what he meant? No. Did you question him? No. Did you ever question him? No. As far as you know, did anyone else ever question him? No. Was your, what was your relationship with Patrick? He told me I was special. Did you have sexual relations with Patrick? Yes. Willingly? Most of the time. Did he sometimes force his sexual attentions on you when they were unwelcome? Sometimes. To your knowledge, did he have sexual relations with other members of the, the organization? Yes, most of the other women, but um, he... Yes? 
Please continue, Rose. He told me, um, he told me he liked me best, that I was his favorite. He would go off to the others, but he'd always come back to me because, because he said I could take it more than they could. Patrick dictated whether or not you had sex? Yeah. Patrick gave the orders? Yeah. Patrick told you what to do, told you when to eat, told you when to sleep? Yeah. He told you what to read, what to, to say, what to think? Objection, redundancy. The defense is showboating and wasting the court's time. Counsel, what is your purpose in pursuing this line of inquiry? Your Honor, my purpose is to present evidence that the defendant was a victim of a religious political cult which sexually abused and, and traumatized her so completely that she was psychologically damaged to the, the point of being unable to make her own decisions and therefore is not wholly responsible for the actions of which she was little more than a powerless bystander. What evidence do you have to present in order to support this supposition on your part? Your Honor, I have, I have two psychologists who have both examined the defendant prepared to give expert testimony as to the ramifications of sexual abuse and occult trauma on her decision-making functionality. I have further witnessed testimony from other former members of the cult who will provide corroboration of the details of the sexual and, and abusive nature of the relationships within the organization. And I have a well-respected behavioral scientist prepared to testify on the lingering and devastating nature of trauma and its effects upon personal responsibility. This will all be taken in turn. In the meantime, and for the present, direct your questions to the matter at hand with more alacrity and leave the supplemental details to their, to their appropriate time. Yeah, yes, Your Honor, of course. You may proceed. On the day in question, he told you to drive the van? Yeah. When did you arrive at the bank? We got to the bank uh, a little after 11. Who was with you in the van? Patrick, uh, Mooney, and Allison. What happened next? Patrick, Mooney, and Allison went in. I, I kept the van running. I waited. I started to get nervous. What made you nervous? The time. It, it was longer than before. I started thinking something was wrong. I, then I heard the shots, then the alarm going off. The three of them came running out. Mooney had been shot. There was blood running down his leg. Three cop cars pulled around the corner. We didn't expect so many so fast. Mooney could barely make it to the van. He was holding on to Allison and, and Patrick wasn't helping. He was reaching in his bag and screaming at the cops and when the door opened, I, I could hear him really clearly as Mooney scrambled into the back of the van. Then he, um, he took out the grenade. Go on. I, I, I think I yelled. I, Mooney was inside the van and I was yelling, get in, get in. And, and there was a shot and Patrick jerked and, 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 and threw the grenade and, and fell. And then there was this explosion fr from the grenade, I guess. Um, it, it was like looking at, at a flower. One of those spiky chrysanthemums with the little spines that shoot out from the center. The middle was was a white gold and the spines were kind of smoky white and it was down this long dark tunnel of the back of the van and and the flower was blooming at the end and, and Patrick was at the end of the tunnel in front of the flower all all black and weird looking and his spine was was curled over and, and and the door slammed and Allison was yelling go 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 and and Mooney was screaming and I just I just drove. Thank you. No further questions.
Is your legal name Ruth Trent? Yeah. Uh, yes. Have you been living under that name? No, but I have. You have been living under your legal name? No. You've been using an assumed alias? N no, I. I Ruth Trent is your legal name, but you have not been living under your legal name. You have been lying for years. N no, I. What I'm is the name Rose Tree, the name by which you are currently known, legally your name? Objection. The defendant's names and the reason for their use are well known by the court. This is pointless badgering. Sustained. Prosecutor, please focus your questions to the matter at hand. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, are you now or have you ever been a member of the National Liberation Organization? Yes. As a member of this organization, you confessed to participating in events causing the deaths of six police officers occurring on July 6, 2007, correct? Yes. So you admit you murdered six police officers. Objection. Improper characterization. Sustained. Strike the question. Yes, Your Honor. During the events of July 6, 2007, you drove the van, correct? Yes. Did you at any time enter the building where the robbery took place? No. As the robbery progressed, did you hear the shots fired? Yes. A after the shots, I could hear the alarm. From inside the bank? I, I don't know. From somewhere. You uh, testified that when Patrick came out of the bank, he was yelling. What was he yelling? I, I don't remember exactly. Did he threaten the police? Yes. Did he use obscenities? Yes. Had he ever spoken of the police in a threatening or dismissive way? Yes. Did he call them yeah, cocksuckers, shit-faced pigs, and stupid assholes? Yes. Did you agree with him? No. Was that how you felt about our law enforcement professionals? No. Did you use the same epithets when describing members of the force? No. Never? No. So you're saying you never swear? Ob objection! Mischaracterization. The defendant's language is not on trial here. Sustained. Does this line of inquiry have a point? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I will be as brief as possible. See that you are. Thank you, <clears throat> Your Honor. Can you repeat what was said? It was also wild. Can the shouting? Can you repeat as you are able what was said? He he was yelling at you, assholes, goddamn son of a bitch. I got it right here for you. Mm. What did he mean by that? I didn't know at the time. No, you did not know. No. Only when he um, when when he what? When he took out the hand grenade, then I knew what he meant. What did he mean? It was a threat. Who was he threatening? The police. Was the hand grenade live? Objection. Speculation. Sustained. Strike the question. Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> did you put the hand grenade in his bag? No. How many hand grenades did he have? I don't know. How many did you see? One. Where did you see it? In his hand when he took it out of his bag. Hmm. Okay, only one. Yes. Did you pack Patrick's bag for him that morning? No. To the best of your knowledge, did anyone else pack Patrick's bag that morning? No. Did you touch the bag that morning? I... Did you put something in the bag? Yes. What did you put in the bag? A sandwich. I made him a sandwich. 
Why did you put it in his bag? I feed people. So you had put something in the bag that morning. Yes. It was 1130 when the robbery took place, correct? Yes. Did you put the grenade in Patrick's bag before 10 or after? Objection. Sustained. Clarify the question. Yes, Your Honor. Did you put the grenade in Patrick's bag before 10? No. Did you put the grenade in Patrick's bag after 10? I didn't. Well, did you? No, I didn't put it in the bag. Where did you put it? I never touched it. You put it in the bag. No. After you, after he pulled out the grenade, what happened? I think I yelled. Mooney was, was inside the van and I was yelling to Patrick. Mr. Marston has testified that he heard you yelling, get him, get him, in reference to the police officers. Is this true? No. You, you were not yelling, get him? No. What were you saying? I was saying, get in. Get in, not get him. Yes. Did you drive away after the first shot was fired? Yes. You did not wait for him to get in? No, I, I thought he was in. <laughs> you left him behind. No, yeah, but I thought he was. Yep. You drove away. You know, why did you drive away if you wanted him to get in? Why did you not wait for him to get in? I thought... I mean, why did I you thought... leave him there? I panicked. Why did you tell him to throw the grenade? I... Objection. Sustained. Strike the question. Yes, Your Honor. Why did you yell, get him? I didn't. What did you yell? I said, get in. If you said, get in, why did you not wait for him to get in? Why did you drive away? That does not make any sense. Can you explain it? Objection. This information has been duly covered. The prosecution is wasting time. Oh, discovering the truth is never a waste of time. Order. The prosecution will control herself. Yes, Your Honor, I apologize. The objection is overruled. Prosecution may continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Can you explain the discrepancy between your words and actions? No. What explanation can you offer? I was confused. I, I thought he was in. I, I panicked. Oh, I see you panicked. And when you learned of your mistake, did you go back? No. He chose not to go back. No, I mean, I didn't go back. Why not? Mooney was hurt. He kept screaming. We, we took him to the emergency room. Allison went in with him. Um, did you wait in the van? No. You chose not to wait in the van? No, I did not wait in the van. Did you wait in the hospital? No. You chose not to wait in the hospital. No, I did not wait in the hospital. What did you do? What did you choose to do? I left them. You left them? Your own comrades suffering from who knows what and you drove away with the money. No. No. Well, it was found in the van. No, but I didn't know it was there. <laughs> oh, come now. Are you telling me that it slipped your mind, that you forgot, that you did not remember $79,000? Yes. <laughs> oh, I see. I wish I lived a life where I could forget $79,000. After you 
left your comrades at the hospital, uh, did you return to the house on Cherry Street? Yes. Did you choose to enter the house on Cherry Street? No. What did you do? I, I drove up, I, I, I parked the van in the driveway. I, I got out of the van and I was sort of, sort of stunned. I, I, I looked at the front door and, and then I just walked away. You walked away? Yes. Why did you walk away? I don't know. That was, that was the end. So you chose to walk away then. You could have walked away at any time. You could have made that choice. You were not so traumatized as to have that choice be impossible because you did make that choice. Objection. You could have decided not to participate in the robbery. You could have decided not to be a part of the murders, but you did not. Order. Prosecutor, I will not have these theatrics in my court. Do you understand me? Yes. Do you understand me? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. My courtroom is not a circus. It is not a spectacle, and it certainly is not a psychological arena for you to work out your personal antagonisms. No, Your Honor, thank you. Moving forward, you will conduct your inquiry with a spirit of moderation and clarity, which will bring honor to yourself and these proceedings. Yes, Your Honor, thank you. And with that firmly in mind, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> After you left the house on Cherry Street, did you go to any other house or domicile in the city? No. Did you make any attempt to contact Mooney or Allison at the hospital? No. Did you attempt to Locate the whereabouts of Patrick. No. Did you attempt to locate any other members of the National Liberation Organization living in the city at that time? No. I never saw any of them again. So, you walked away. Hit the highway. Leaving $79,000 behind you. I didn't know it was there. <laughs> there had been a bank robbery. A man dumped a satchel of money in the van, correct? Did you remember that? I guess. I... You guess. What did you think you were there for? A pleasant drive in the park? No, I, I didn't know what Six I was- Six police officers died in the explosion. Did you know that? Yeah. How did you know? I read about it the next day. Still, you walked away free. You walked away of your own choice, under your own responsibility, just like you always could have. Objection. And Psychological evidence will prove the nature of trauma. No more questions, Your Honor. You may step down. The court will recess. Hi, hon. Oh, it's great to see you. Hi. You look great. How are you doing? Fine. Good. Good. That's good. <laughs> that's, that's really good. Did you have a good trip? Sure. Good. How was your flight? Fine. It was fine. You look great. Sure. If, if you want, we could, um... Uh, I'd have been here earlier, but one of the planes didn't make the connection, so I had to take a later flight, you know. Sure. 
I'm glad you came. How's school? I don't really... What? I don't really want to talk about that right now. But... It's not... But... It's just not important. Well, I want to know how you're doing. No, look, I'm sorry. It's fine. It's great. I got a 4.0 this term, and I really liked all my classes except for geology, which was too easy. I should have challenged the class and moved up a course, but I'll know better next time. And I played field hockey, but I'm not very good. But I think I'll try for the team next year because it's really a lot of fun, and that's... that's... Uh, that's it. What's wrong? Nothing. Blossom. Nothing! Nothing's wrong! I just... Shit. What? I hate this. I hate myself. I hate feeling this way. What is it? I hate it. I hate what? it. Stop, stop, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. What's wrong? Tell me. Tell me. No. Come on, Blossom. I hate you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I try to think about other things, how much I love you, all the good things, but I just can't. I can't. I'm so, I'm so angry, so angry inside, and I hate you so much, and I hate hating you. And, and, and It's okay. It's fine. Go ahead. Hate me. I do. A lot. Jesse does sometimes. You can too. I'm a big girl. Go ahead. You lied. No. You lied to me. Just Everything you said was a lie. No, just about me. How can I believe that? How can I believe anything you say? Because it's the truth. I only lied about who I was, what I'd done, because I hated it and I wanted to get as far away from it as possible. I loved you. Don't say that. I did love you. I do love you. You lied to a child. Someone who believed everything you said. I depended on you. I trusted you. And it's all shit. It's not shit. Fuck you. Watch your mouth. You're not my mother. I don't know you. I don't know who you are. Who are you? That's it. That's the worst. It doesn't matter what they do. This, this is what kills me. That I hurt you and Jessie. She looks at me sitting there, the person I love more than anyone in the world, even more than you, Honey Drop, though you run a close second. And I think she's here because of me. If she hadn't met me, she wouldn't have to be here, wouldn't have to sit through this crap, wouldn't have to have her life ripped open in front of a bunch of strangers. It is my fault. The only person I have ever wanted to make truly happy, and I give her shit. I'm sorry. It's okay. I shouldn't have said that. No, you said what you felt, now you don't have to worry about it anymore. I love you. I love you too. When you grow up, you learn you love people, even when you hate them. Does the defendant wish to make a statement at this time? Yes, Your Honor. You may do so now. Thank you, Your Honor. I came here on my own. I came because I wanted justice. No one made me, no one found me. I want justice for the people I hurt, for the people I love. Justice isn't about revenge and it isn't making it all better. The dead are still dead, the pain still pain and the hurt keeps going. But justice is a promise that debts get paid and things work out and that there's a plan in the world. 
That's what I want. That's why I'm here. The Bible says, blessed are they who hunger and thirst for justice. I would like to thank everybody here because soon I'm not going to be thirsty anymore. Thank you. I know a rose tree springing forth from an ancient root. As men of old were singing, from Jesse came the shoot that for a blossom bright. Will the defendant and counsel please rise? It is the judgment of the jury that substantial mitigating circumstances are in evidence in this case. Based on these findings, I hereby sentence you, Ruth Trent, also known as Rose Tree, to be remanded for incarceration to a federal penitentiary to serve a sentence of no less than eight years. This court is adjourned. Of course, she still leaves the olive oil on the counter and swears she puts it away. <laughs> sure she does. Tad and Ella, no news there. His new boyfriend seems to be some sort of Venezuelan skydiver, or he's gone to Venezuela to skydive or something. I don't really follow it. <laughs> Ella wants to try something with the mixed squash. She's writing you a note or something. I just nod and cut the checks. Oh, and did I tell you Pacific Company suppliers went bankrupt. Really? What, did they owe us anything? Fortunately not. That's a gold star for keeping the books current. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> oh, and uh, Blossom got another marriage proposal from that Greek boy she met when she was working at the hostel. Another one? What is it with those Greeks? No, this is the first Greek. The other one was Alsatian. I hope she's not taking any of this too seriously. Oh, well, you know, she, she. Two years down, only six more to go, remember? Yes. We're gonna make it. Yes. We will. I know. I promise. I know it. Just 2,190 days to go. That's it. <laughs> That's my little accountant. <laughs> hey, and maybe less with good behavior. Maybe. And I don't know about you, but my behavior has been absolutely great. <laughs> I love you. I love you too.